Good morning, everybody. Was yesterday incredible or what? Good night. Uh, I got to say this real quick. Uh, Kevin Young, they've become dear, dear friends. And yesterday he gave me a shout out as the fat pastor. Um, no way. No that's way. not a bad thing. <laughs> I got to explain that. So, and I'll get into that in a minute. But that's my, uh, that's my online thing that, that we do. Um, it started out, it was supposed to be ironic. Unfortunately, it's starting to become literal. <laughs> so, uh, we're, we're working on fixing that, but uh, that's that's a good thing. That's and Kevin. Kevin is just such a dear friend, and he said a couple of things yesterday that just really sparked some things that I've been thinking about and processing, and how that your passion uh, doesn't just have to come from pastoring. You know, right. whatever whatever brings you energy, like pour into that, like go after that. And I think that where where my heart was was leaping with that statement is that I think that in letting yourself be energized by other things than just ministry, you end up finding ways to pour into people that maybe you'll never pour into inside your own building. Right. And so that's, that's what I'm passionate about, is how do we reach people that maybe will never set foot in the doors of our church? Right. And so we, uh, we pastor Dad's House Church in Yakima. We started it almost three years ago. We'll be three years old on Mother's Day. Uh, the short story is I didn't want to be a pastor. My wife didn't want to be a pastor of a church. We loved working with young people. That was where our heart was at. But God just wouldn't get off of us about it. And so we finally said yes and amen. And now we can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah, uh, we, we launched youth ministry at our church last week. And my wife, Tanil and I, we went out with the, uh, with the youth group. And we walked away going, man, we just are okay not being in charge of this stuff anymore. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all right. Uh, it felt good. But, you know, they went from like 5 o'clock until 1030. We were done at 530, you know, in our hearts. Um, <laughs> we stayed with them the whole time. It was good. Um, but, yeah, so my, my online thing is the fat pastor. And that's because my passion outside of ministry is cooking. I love to cook. And... Um, that's brought some really unique opportunities and unique um, opportunities. And so back in 2009, I was putting together a bucket list and writing down all the things that I just like to do before I die. And because I love cooking so much, one of the things that I said I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to cook for Gordon Ramsay before I died. And so I put that on my list, and you know, if anybody's familiar with Gordon Ramsay, you know, you're a lot of, it's really funny, you know, religion starts breaking out when yeah. you mention his name. Yeah. Just be like, Gordon Ramsay, doesn't he swear at everybody? Yeah, yeah but he's a really cool chef, and <laughs> man, that would be fun. So anyway, so in 2015, uh, my niece called me, she lives in Portland, she's a chef, and she said, hey, MasterChef is gonna be having tryouts in Portland, why don't you, why don't you come and try out? And it was like the week of the tryouts. And so on a whim, I called my buddy and I said, hey, you wanna go with me to Portland? Let's go, let's go do this, let's go try out. And had no idea what would happen, what it was gonna be like. Long story short, went through the process and last summer on May 31st, I was on MasterChef with Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> It was crazy. Um, I, I lost in the first round. I got beat by another minister. Fancy uh -huh. that. Um, but she became a dear, dear friend. I'll tell you this. She was from the South, and they made us cook fried chicken. Did I have a shot? Uh -huh. <laughs> Not really. But, <laughs> but here's what happened. It was really cool. If you watched it, you didn't get to see this part because they don't show you everything that takes place. Yeah. But Gordon Ramsay loved my food, and he actually voted for me to stay, and it was like all of my dreams were coming true in one moment. It was so cool. Um, so I walked away with a smile on my face, even though I didn't get to stay on the show as long as I wanted to. But what was really neat is he stood there, and he looked at me, and he said, Sean, and they did show this part. He said, Sean, it's clear that you're born to serve your community, uh, but it's also clear that you were born to cook. Don't stop. And that, that lit a fire. I mean, so many of my friends walked away from that experience going, you know, this, this was terrible. He yelled at me. He said my food was awful. He said my food was bad. And I walked away going, wow, he loved my food. That was fun. So what are we going to do with this? What are, we, what, what are we going to do? And so because our church has always been a church that really seeks to reach out, and I tell my people every single Sunday from the time that we started Dad's House, I said, hey, we, I'm not trying to get all of Yakima inside my church. I'm yeah. trying to get my church into all of Yakima. Yeah. And so I'm not trying to plant churches. I want to plant people. That's my heart. Um, so if I can get you out the doors, I feel like we're doing the right thing. And so I think that we have to set the example for that, though, because that's really our heart, right? 
at the end of the day, as pastors, we want to reach people that aren't being reached. We're not excited, you know, when people just hop around from church to church to church. We don't just want to reach those people, even though we end up getting a lot of really strong leaders of people who have been in the church for a long time, and then they jump on board, and they're ready to serve, and that's, that's fun. But our heart is really to reach people who don't know Jesus yet, right? Right. And so we, we started asking the question, well, what do we do? And I remember um, I, was, I was praying one day, and... I was talking to the Lord, and he said, Sean, you know that I'm supernatural. I said, yeah. And he said, well, do you know that I'm also super practical? Yes. <laughs> that's good. I said, wow. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Yes. Yes. Um, Come on. And we get to process that. We get to process that with our church, and now they're tired of me hearing, uh, tired of me saying it, I think. But um, he's supernatural, but he's also super practical. And how do we as a people who are supernatural, how do we become a people who are also super practical? And he said the supernatural without the super practical is superficial. Oh, oh man, that, that's, man. that's a hard one. I don't, uh. But we realize that there is something to be said for everything that we do in here that's supernatural. It's got to be met with the super practical when we go out. We met with that yeah, when we leave those, the, the doors of those buildings. And I was reading the story of Zacchaeus um, not too long ago. And, you know, Zacchaeus is a guy that, you know, doesn't know Jesus. He wants to, he hears Jesus is coming to town. He's a sinner. He's considered the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low. And your, your messages yesterday, Michael, are just so our heartbeat for what we want for our people as a family. And this message of Zacchaeus, because of all of that, hit me so hard when I'm reading this months ago. And... I'm reading about a guy who's really short, you know, and he goes to see Jesus and there are all of these people that are crowding around him and Zacchaeus, who really needs to see Jesus, he can't because of all of the people, the religious leaders, the whoever else is, who are standing around, he can't get to where Jesus is. And so he climbs a tree and I'm reading this and of course I share it with my con congregation and you know, I think a really good follow-up scripture to that, that passage is Romans 3, 23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, right? Um, <laughs> and so Zacchaeus is a guy who, who falls short of the glory of God. But I'm reading this, and he climbs a tree, and Jesus sees him. Thank God that Jesus saw Zacchaeus. Yeah, come on. Yeah. But if this thing is about family, what if his dad had been? What if Zacchaeus' dad had been there? He wouldn't have had to climb a tree. His dad had put him on his shoulders. So how do we stop letting the trees do what we're called to do? And start putting people on our shoulders so that they can see Jesus. And so, anyways, coming back to this whole food thing, we, we come back to our community. And Yakima, if you're familiar with Yakima, we... We got our issues. It's my city, man. I love my city. I don't like to talk about the issues, but we got problems with gangs. We got problems with homelessness. We got issues that need to be solved. And I was sitting in a forum. We'd had a real violent outburst around that same time that the show came out and lots of things were going on. And um, sat in a big forum of, of ministers and people from the, from the community and listened to a guy talk about this program that he runs, the Yakima Police Athletic League. And he was talking about how that they've got like 300 kids that show up every month to come and be a part of their opportunities just for kids to do something different. And he said, we got all these opportunities and we don't have any people coming to help us. And so if you really care about what's going on in the city, don't complain about it, like come and help us. And he, he said, we've got this, we've got boxing, we've got this. He goes, we got a huge kitchen. And I went, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. And so I took one of my friends and we sat down with him and we said, what can we do? What can we do? How can we help? Maybe we have an opportunity here that God's putting in front of us. And so, long story short, we, uh, we created a program called Urban Kitchen in our city. And Love talking it. about what we're passionate about, I'm passionate about this program. It's a three-month program. It's totally free. Brings in people, uh, brings in kids from the community. Uh, gives them an opportunity to learn culinary uh, for three months. And then on the other hand, we have an amazing guy in our town that's a very successful businessman that teaches them business for three months. Wow. And at the end of that three month program, they get to run their own pop-up restaurant for three nights. And so this, we're currently in our second run of that, which is super fun, super cool. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it, it's been really fun just to see a group of people and a group of kids 
who may not enter into the doors of my church, or at least not right now, to be able to come into a place, to be totally loved, yeah. to be taught great skills, to have a lot of fun doing it, and to be able to know that we're, we're reaching a, a group of people and we're doing something that we, we would never have been able to do in our building. I mean, it's just not possible to do it right. in our building. Um, and the stories that have come out of that have been so cool. We Our first go-round, we had... Uh, a, a lot of young kids, so they were all like 10 to 13 years old. And these guys ran their own restaurant for three nights. It was wow. crazy, it was insane. There were 12 of them, and they did an amazing job. But one of my favorites was uh, a little guy named Oscar, and Oscar turned 11 while he was in our program. And wow. on the night that we're doing our, one of the nights that we're doing our pop-ups, we're walking through the kitchen, and it was kind of quiet, and I looked at him and I said, dude, I am so stinking proud of you. <laughs> and I said, I, I hope you're proud of yourself. <laughs> And he turns around and he goes, I've never been proud of myself before. Yeah. And this is, this is what we get to do. Yeah. So, Kevin, when you talk about your energy being fueled by something right. other than ministry, right. guys, your energy that may not come just from ministry is an opportunity to reach a group of people that maybe will never set foot in the doors of your church. And if you only get your passion and your energy from preaching, you might be missing an, a totally, completely new opportunity to reach a different group of people. Good. Good. So what's your energy? What's your passion? Not just for your sake. I mean, it is it is good to have those things that fuel you and, and give you energy, give you excitement. Yeah. Well, what could it do for the sake of your city? Yeah. What right. could it do for the sake of a group of people who don't know who Jesus is, that God is a father? I had so much fun being down in, um, in L.A. for the taping of the show and I, I knew that when I went down there, I kept hearing, I, I was just blown away that this was happening. You know, this 34,000 people tried out for this thing. Wow. I did not have any idea that I was going to make top 40. Wow. And I got down there and I'm going, God, you're, you're really nice. Thank you. <laughs> this is really kind to let me be a part of this. And, but I kept hearing him say, Sean, I'm fulfilling your joy. Yeah. But I also you want go. you to fulfill my joy. And so it became a partnership of what do we get to do? And I'm telling you, I have never been in a setting where I felt the constant, pre I can feel it talking about it, the constant presence of Holy Spirit. The conversations that took place were mind blowing. There were times when we'd be on set and we'd be in between filming and doing different things. Just the filming of one show takes days. And we were going through all of that, that, that stuff and someone would come up and say, hey, I got a question about this. And waterworks, Holy Spirit would just show up. And the next thing we know, we're both crying. Yeah. I was sitting in my, I think probably my favorite story. My roommate um, was an amazing guy, um, had an incredible background. and had some really hard things that had happened in his life right before he came to be a part of this. And we were hanging out and just sharing stories over, you know, over the nights that we were hanging out together. And he was sharing different things. And um, he was, he's a pretty important dude. Like, I couldn't believe that he even had the time to come and be a part of this. That He's involved in politics. I'll say that. We'll leave it at that. Um, and, and so we were sharing. He was talking about the things that had happened in his life and asking about what I did. And what, you know, what, is, what does this mean for me? Is, is it good God let these things happen to me? Why, why do these things happen? We were just sharing life, sharing stories. And uh, on, on the third night that we were together, there was just this radical presence of God. Mm -hmm. And he ends up giving his life to Christ. He just Whoa, meets Jesus powerful. in the room. And I mean, yeah. when I say meets Jesus, like, I think Jesus was right there in front of him. I mean, it was just insane. But we're sitting there talking. He's sharing different things. And all of a sudden, I just had a picture. And I'll share this because I think this is really fun. This is something that really drives me when I think about salvation and people meeting Jesus. You know, so often we want people. We, the Bible says that we need to confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's really awesome. That's really good. But I don't think that's where it, it needs to stop. That's where it does yeah. stop many times. But, you know, when Jesus is talking to Peter, he says, Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter confesses that Jesus is Lord. But Jesus takes it to the next step. Jesus looks at Peter and he says, okay, now let me tell you who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then he pours identity back into Peter. See, we, we have people confess who Jesus is, but what if we started saying, okay, let's ask Jesus who you are. Yeah. What would happen? What would that, what would happen? And so we're doing that. We're having fun. And, and he's just, I, I said, why don't you ask God what he says about you? And he puts his head down and he's crying, man. I'm crying. And he looks up and he goes, I don't know what to do right now, but this is the best I've ever felt in my life. And he falls back over on the bed and keeps weeping, you know? 
And so as, as he's having his moment, the Lord gives me a picture. And so he sits back up and I, I said, you know, I don't know if this is going to make any sense to you or not. I said, but I saw you in your house. And I said, and I saw Jesus, and Jesus was walking through the house with his arms out like this. I said, does that, does that mean anything to you? And he goes, what? And I said, what? <laughs> and he goes, are you kidding me right now? And I said, what, what, what's, what's going on? And he goes, right before I left, he said, I was sitting in my room. I was sitting on my bed, and my daughter walks in. And she goes, Dad, there's a man in our house. <laughs> and he said, what? Whoa. And she goes, yeah, there's a man in our house. And he's just walking around doing this. Wow. Yes. Yes. So cool. yeah. wow. yes. Yes. And again, he just falls back over. It's weeping, you know, and I'm weeping, and we're having fun, you know, having a good time. Oh, wow. Neither one of us made it past the first round, but you know, hey. <laughs> but it was so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. So when I think about passion and I think about God fulfilling our joy. I, I really believe that with all my heart, that every single one of you who are in here, we're, we're all called to ministry. We're all called to serve Jesus with what we do, whether that's in the church, outside of the church. The people that you serve are called to serve Jesus inside the church, outside the church. But you've got passions. You've got things that you love. You've got things that you enjoy. And I think sometimes we feel guilty about those things because we're so busy with ministry. And of course, we know that ministry is busy. Those things that bring us joy, God's given them to us for our joy. Yeah. He's given them to us to fulfill yeah. our joy. Mm -hmm. And maybe he's also given them to us to fulfill his joy. Beautiful. Good. I got to spend some time with him. Keep picking on you, Kevin. Sorry. But I'll tell you what, guys. We were with him for a weekend, and I walked away with so much. You know, we came to minister at their church, and I walked away feeling like I'd been at a uh, an incredible conference just because of my interaction with Kevin and his family. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to learn honor, hang out with that dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, one of the most honoring men that I've ever known in my life. Yeah. And I learned a lot. But anyways, all of that to say, we, we spent time on his boat. We went out and had fun water skiing. And the reason he does that is so that he can bring kids on his boat and give them experience they'll never forget. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And the gentleman that runs our culinary program it's an amazing guy. Um, if you've uh, ever had a jazz apple or an envy apple, um, he's the inventor of that apple. He works for Allen Brothers Fruit. His name is Dave Allen. He runs our culinary school. He's in his 70s, amazing man. And he's also working on a project with Google to create a robot that will pick apples from the orchard. I mean, he's just an amazing guy. And he came to me a couple weeks ago and he goes, Sean, I want to do something different with this class that we haven't done before. He said, I want to take them out to dinner. He said, I want to take them to a really nice dinner. He said, I want them to not just enjoy it from a culinary perspective. He said, I want them to, to, to think about how they're going to spend their money. And what are you going to buy? How are you going to factor in tax? How are you going to fa factor in the tip? And to really think about this. And he said, not only that, he said, these are kids that, you know, probably have never had an experience like this. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what kind of a restaurant he's talking about. Are we going to Denny's? Are we going, where are we going to go? <laughs> He ended up taking them to one of the nicest restaurants in our city. Yeah, and he it. sat them down ahead of time and he handed them an envelope. And in that envelope was 70 bucks. Every single kid wow. got 70 bucks. These are kids, again, we're not working with kids that are coming from the, 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 the good part of town, if you will. Yeah. We're working with kids that have never had experiences like this before in their life. Yeah. And he sits there with me and he says, Sean, he said, I want to do two things. I'm trying to limit everything I'm doing to two things. I want to work on this robot project, and I want to work with you on the kitchen. And that's what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. It's his passion. You know, he spent his whole entire life in the Apple industry, uh, creating an amazing organization that's going around the world. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? I'm really passionate about these kids. I'm really passionate about this kitchen program. And so that's good. what I want to pour my life into. You see, that's, that's, it's like us, church, right? You know, we, we, uh, we're called as pastors. We're called as yeah. ministers. That's what we do, many of us vocationally. That's what we do. But it's interesting that his vocation, yeah. he's willing to put that aside in order to live out his passion for these young people. I'm not saying quit your church. I don't want to quit my church. I love Come what on. we're doing. We're having a blast. Yeah. Come on. But what is your passion? What energizes you? And how does the Lord want to fulfill your joy? But how does, how does your passion fulfill 
pigs. Come on. Father, I thank you for these guys. Yeah. I thank you for every leader that is pouring out their heart, is pouring out their guts, pouring out their lives to be able to release the kingdom. And I, Father, I thank you that, that in that setting that you have called us to be fathers, you yes. called us to be mothers, yeah. because you are a father, and all you have ever wanted was to get your kids back. Help us to join you in that. Yeah, Lord. But help us to be able to break through the barriers of our thinking, to break, to break through the barriers of tradition, to break through the barriers of religion, and to be able to step outside of the box and to say, where does my energy and my passion, where does it fit, not just in my church, but in my city? Yeah. And allow that to spur us to bring transformation that will change everything for the, yes. for the sake of your incredible name, Jesus. Yeah. We love you and we thank you for the, the hearts that you've given us. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you. Yeah.